Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 5 Minutes in GI, a show where we try to answer the most frequently asked questions about gastrointestinal disorders in just under five minutes. I'm your host, Alyssa Sutton, and I'm the program coordinator at the International Foundation for Gastrointestinal Disorders. Today, I am happy to welcome Dr. Luis Alcala, who is one of IFFGD's junior academicians and is also a gastroenterologist at Val de Hebron Hospital in Barcelona, Spain. His areas of interest include neurogastroenterology as well as GI motility. Dr. Alcala, thank you so much for joining us today. So today's question is, what causes the buildup of gas in the intestines? Thank you, Elisa, for your kind introduction. And today, I'd like to discuss a topic that might be a bit uncomfortable, but affects us all, which are gas-related symptoms and their un underlying causes. Gas-related symptoms are a common concern, and understanding their origin can help us approach, manage, and alleviate these symptoms effectively. Let's begin by delving into how gas gets into the digestive tract. Gas in the GI tract is a natural byproduct of various processes, mainly swallowing air and the breakdown of certain foods by bacteria, which live primarily in the large intestine. Firstly, aerophagia or the swallowing of air naturally occurs when we eat or drink. Some habits like eating quickly, chewing gum, smoking, or wearing loose denture can increase the amount of air we swallow. Most of the swallow air exits the stomach through belching but the remaining gas moves into the intestines and is later released through the rectum. We will get back to this gas later. Secondly, gas can be produced when bacteria in the large intestine breaks down undigested carbohydrates, producing hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and in some cases, methane gases. These carbohydrates may not be fully digested due to absences of certain enzymes in the small bowel, and these carbohydrates can be sugars, starches, and fiber. It's very important to understand that despite being uncomfortable and potentially embarrassing, gas and gas-related symptoms are not life-threatening. On average, people produce about one to four pints of gas a day and pass gas about 14 times a day. So this is quite normal. Most of this gas is odorless, composed of gas like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and hydrogen, but sometimes the bacteria in the large intestine can release gases containing sulfur, and this gas containing sulfur leads to the unpleasant odor of flatulence. Now, gas-related symptoms such as belching, bloating, and the passing of gas can vary from person to person. So the important question is, when should you be concerned? You should be concerned if these symptoms bother you on a regular basis. If they occur frequently or are accompanied by other issues like abdominal pain, changes in the bowel habit like constipation or diarrhea, or are associated to weight loss. In these scenarios, it is crucial to consult with a doctor. It is important to recognize that many health conditions can contribute to increased gas or gas-related symptoms, such as irritable bowel syndrome, problems digesting carbohydrates like lactose or fructose intolerance, and other digestive diseases like celiac disease or a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Around 50% of patients that have functional gastrointestinal disorders, such as irritable bowel syndrome, will complain of gas-related symptoms like bloating. In these disorders, there are many issues which involve how the brain and the gut work together. In, on one hand, affecting the movement of gas through the gastrointestinal tract, particularly the intestines, and on the other hand, the perception of gas inside the gastrointestinal tract. Therefore, it is important to seek help from a gastroenterologist to address conditions related to augmented gas production and gas-related symptoms appropriately, tailoring treatment options to individual needs, and providing relief and improving the quality of life for those dealing with gas-related symptoms. In conclusion, gas-related symptoms are common. They affect both the general population and individuals with specific gastrointestinal disorders. Understanding the different causes and seeking medical guidance can pave the way for effective management and improve well-being. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. I think that was going to be very helpful for our patients. If you are a patient that is struggling with intestinal gas, you can always visit our website at ifftd.org. 
Um, but for right now, that's all the time that we have for today. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. And as always, if you have a question after watching this video, please feel free to leave a comment below or email us directly at IFFGD at IFFGD.org. And we'll do our best to answer your question in another episode of 5 Minutes in GI. 